The Lord be with you and a warm welcome to you from all of us here at Powers Court with Kilbride. Greetings from beneath the chestnut tree, which is in full bloom at the moment. It's beautiful to sit underneath the shade of this tree now and it's actually starting to rain ever so slightly as I'm greeting you this morning. You're welcome to spend the next short while with us here in this small square as we worship God, we hear his holy word and maybe reflect for just a moment as to how that word may be spoken into our lives today. Before we begin, let's pause for just a moment to acknowledge the presence of the Christ with us now. The Gospel reading is from John 13, verses 31 to 35. When he had gone out, Jesus said, Now the Son of Man has been glorified, and God has been glorified in him. If God has been glorified in him, God will also glorify him in himself and will glorify him at once. Little children, I am with you only a little longer. You will look for me, and as I said to the Jews, so now I say to you, where I am going, you cannot come. I give you a new commandment, that you love one another. Just as I have loved you, you also should love one another. By this, everyone will know that you are my disciples, if you have love for one another. This is the word of the Lord. It's interesting to note that the lectionary after Easter Sunday 
turns its attention to the book of Acts for our first readings. It's uh, sensible when you think that we are immediately learning about what the disciples did or the apostles did uh, immediately after the death and resurrection of our Lord and they achieved amazing things. I would recommend, and it's quite easily done, that you take up the Bible and read the book of Acts and find out the power that was instilled within them, invested, I suppose, within them. And so, in keeping with this, uh, one of our readings in our churches today is that amazing vision that St. Peter is given where a large cloth is dropped from the heavens containing every different type of creature. And he is told to eat which is overstepping some of the boundaries that were put in place within the Jewish faith with regard to the right types of food to eat and not to eat. And there's an underlying message of uh, acceptance and equality here. And I would uh, boldly say also that there is a removal of some of the rules. Let's not forget that uh, with the height of respect for all of the disciplines of religion, uh, in his day, Jesus overstepped a lot of the traditions that were in place in order to deliver the message of God's love, the depth or the, the absolute hub, the heart of his reason for coming to earth at all was to let us have a glimpse of the heart of God. And that is uh, love. That is love and acceptance of all people, dare I say. But the gospel reading today is rather short. Jesus explains to his followers that in a little while they will see him no longer, but he leaves them with one command, and that is to love one another. As the rain falls quite heavily now on the, the leaves over my head, I'd like to share a little piece that was read to me midweek at our service by one of the members of our fellowship group. And it speaks of the absolute heart of God, the heart of Christ. And it's a very clear message for all of us to receive today. And it asks at the very beginning of itself a very clear question. As we think about all our doctrines, all our own theological points of view, as we think about always thinking that we ourselves are right, when it comes to love and acceptance of individuals, I just want to read these words to you this morning and see where they sit on your heart. How does the thief on the cross fit into your theology? No baptism, no communion, no confirmation, no speaking in tongues, no mission trip, no volunteerism and no church clothes. He couldn't even bend his knees to pray. He didn't say the sinner's prayer and, among other things, he was a thief. Jesus didn't take away his pain, heal his body or smite the scoffers. Yet it was a thief who walked into heaven the same hour as Jesus, simply by believing. He had nothing more to offer than his belief that Jesus was who he said he was. No spin from brilliant theologians, no ego nor arrogance, no shiny lights, skinny jeans, or crafty words, no haze machines, donuts, or coffee in the entrance. 
just a naked dying man on a cross, unable to even fold his hands to pray. This is the simplicity of the gospel.